Hello and welcome back to 802 Garage. We also have Jacob from Rust Belt Garage. What's up guys? And we have been working on the V10 build, which is part of the reason for the delay between Eclipse videos. But the day this video comes out, we will actually be doing a first start live stream of the Eclipse GSX right there, the Red Beauty, at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's like 3 p.m. in California. Sorry if you're at work, but we got to do it before it gets dark. So, going to be a lot of fun. And that's Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Hope to see you there on 802 Garage. What is up 802 Garage? The sun just came out, which must be a good sign. And we are getting so close to starting this DSM again and also close to time for me to get a haircut and a shave unless I just want to go back to my old school caveman look for my old videos. At any rate, the plan for today is to put in the axles, the transfer case, the lower cross member and hopefully the starter and then we are almost ready to start this thing and I'm really excited to hear the 4G63 hopefully roar back to life and I hope you are too. If you want to see this thing run, please subscribe, hit that button below, turn on the notification bell, all that YouTube nonsense. But thank you so much and I am going to get to work. So right off the bat, I did skip some boring stuff for y'all. I was cleaning off the axle shafts and lubing them, so I already did this one in a previous video. If you really want to see some shaft working action, go check out the other GSX project vids. But basically, I used some Super Lube silicone lubricant for where the seals are going to contact because I didn't really want particulate grease on those. And then I used some of the Valvoline synthetic on the splines and also the drive shaft. So I uh, made sure this was nice and clean. Again, silicone gel on that and then clean that out and beveling synthetic inside of there. Now you won't hear me say that that's the only way to do this or even the right way, but it's the way I did it. So that's what we're going with. And next I need to actually uh, pull this out and get the intermediate shaft to go into the transmission. Now you're not gonna hear me say that that's the only way to do that or the right way to do it, but it's the way I did it and it makes sense to me. So I think it's gonna be fine. Next, I need to actually, uh, you know, yank this out of the way so that I can get the intermediate shaft to go into the transmission. So I'm basically just going to push out on the brake rotor to uh, pull this axle outwards, get the shaft lined up, let the knuckle come back in, and then kind of slide it into place, making sure that I can get this carrier bearing back up where it needs to be. So it should slide in like that. Stupidly, I didn't even have the hood open while working under there. Little amateur tip. Always open up the hood if you're going to be working underneath the car. Because it gives you more light to go into the engine bay, you know, like if you're not dumb. So sometimes I'm smart. I labeled these bolts nicely. Driver axle bearing carrier. There's only one bearing carrier, but whatever. I labeled it that way. And then I labeled which one was the driver side and which one was the passenger side bolt. So now I know where these go. And just so you know, I guess the driver side bolt is this one. It's a little bit shorter and it's threaded all the way. And the passenger has this length without any threads and it's a bit longer. At least this is what I was given. So in yet another case of never mind, but it's not my fault, I swear, these are not the correct bolts. Uh, it seemed a little weird to me, so I went in line and looked it up. They're both supposed to look more like this one, but neither of these are Mitsubishi bolts. They are more bolts from the hardware store, so that's life. So this is about the best view I can get you of installing the carrier bearing, and I'm going to get to it. The torque spec for these is 26 to 33 foot-pounds, so I've got my torque wrench set to 30. The threads on the longer bolt were damaged, and I'm going to go with this, which is another hardware store bolt that's a little bit shorter even, but whatever, I'm going to go with it because it looks a lot nicer, and I'm going to replace these later anyways. It's really annoying me because I have an entire bin of DSM bolts from parting out a DSM with my subscriber Caleb. I'll put a little link up here for you to watch that. It was actually a pretty fun video, or two parts anyways. Uh, but yeah, going to put these in now, finally. Finally, that was just plain silly. So now I can actually put this ball joint back in. Drop the nut in the dirt as always. And I see the boot here is actually ripped, which could be my fault from letting it sit this way, but you know, can't win them all. I'll have to attend to that fairly soon. Seems like this ball joint's fairly solid still. And I believe these are supposed to get 44 to 52 foot pounds. So I'm just going to go by feel. I discovered, of course, that I'm just spinning the ball within the joint. So what I need to do is apply some pressure on this before I can actually get that nut torqued down. 
This was how I had to support it last time to get the nuts cracked, so makes sense I have to do it to tighten them as well. Looks like I'm not really getting it to seat the way I need to. All right, so I don't know how much of it I'm gonna show, but I basically struggled for a long time to get this ball joint nut over here to actually tighten down, but it's just spinning within the joint, so not a ton I can do about that right this second. For now, I'm just gonna put the wheel on, and then hopefully a little bit of suspension travel will get that stuck in there. But either way, I can deal with it more after I get the car to move. And I also have to do this side. For this axle, it needs to go up in there, so I may have screwed up if I can't pull this out enough to actually get it to go back into that gap, but we shall see. Yeah, so it looks like I will have to undo this bolt to get the upright out of the way so that I can actually put the axle back in, of course. It's not that everything wants to fight me, it's that almost everything wants to fight me. All right. Oh man, I freshly cleaned that axle and it's getting all dirty. It's not gonna go. Son of a beaver. Well, I guess it's time to undo the axle. So let that be a lesson to you. If you're gonna do it my way and pull the ball joint to swing the axle out of the transmission, you're gonna need the axle prop back up in there before you can actually remove the transmission, which is a pain. There, enjoy some nice foreground scenery while I work. I just gotta clean those threads back up and re-grease them since I got dirt all over them. Well, there you go. I guess you got some shaft working action after all, so I hope you enjoyed. Now, time to put it back in. The key here is to not get this dirty again. There we go. Come on. Yeah, that's in. And then you should be able to get a nice satisfying click in there. So let's see if I can do that. shouldn't be able to just pull that out. So that's locked in. Nice. I cleaned up this hardware and I'm gonna give it quite a bit of anti-seize. And upon closer inspection, this is another hardware store special. It's supposed to be a 17 millimeter, it's a 19 millimeter, but it is what it is. And this apparently gets 65 foot-pounds. Definitely going better than the other side. And like I said, these are 44 to 52 foot pounds. Feels like I'm probably getting close to that. <sighs> I'd say that's definitely good. Now back over to the axle nut. This is just a big old lock washer basically. It goes on this way, so it tapers outward. Again, some anti-seize. So the field service manual says 145 to 188 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go with 145 first. This only goes up to 150. And then basically you're supposed to go no further than 188 to line up the cotter pin holes. So hopefully I'll be close. There's 145. To sum up the procedure I used, I went to 145 foot pounds. It didn't line up a cotter pin hole. So I went to 150. That still didn't quite line it up. So I just went a little bit past that. Now I got them lined up. I do have a new cotter pin. I coated it in grease so it won't corrode so quickly. Looks good to me. All right, so I can actually put this wheel on without feeling guilty because this side is properly done up. I will have to go back over to the other side at some point and take the axle out anyways because I have to repair that outer boot so that all the grease doesn't come out and I don't lose that axle because they are pretty expensive and hard to come by these days. And I also have to torque that ball joint correctly. These would normally get 80 foot-pounds, but for right now they're gonna get a couple ugga duggas because I'm sure this will have to come off again sometime soon. Actually, you know what? Won't take me long, I'll torque them. Already had the torque wrench out anyways. Nice to do things correctly. There 
There we go. So I've been spending some time messing with the ball joint on this side to see if I can get it to fully torque down and the axle pulled out. So got to put that back in. Like I said, this just has a literal zip tie on it. So I have some actual steel ties to use on that later. For now, I'm just going to try to slot that back in. It did at least give me the chance to throw some extra grease in there, help ensure that this thing lives. <laughs> All right, and uh, I guess that's good. All right, and basically through the right combination of swear words and magic, I did actually get that ball joint reattached properly. No, but actually I basically cleaned the crap out of all of it. I re-greased inside of the boot, cleaned off the threads, ran the bolt down and up a few times, put it all back together, slammed it down, hammered it on, and then got the bolt to go on and torque down. So good to go for now. Got the axle back in, put the wheel back on. Woo! And the car is officially supported under its own weight again with the axles and transmission back in. I still have more to do that I am going to put in this video, but it's getting pretty dark and I want to go in because I'm hurting and tired and all these pains in the butt, like the ball joints and wrong bolts, etc., all ended up taking a lot longer than planned. All right, folks, I'm finally back at it with the Eclipse over here, and there was quite a delay between the work you saw earlier in this video and what I'm going to do now, but that's mostly because I was working on my mom's car and then the V10 Impreza build with Jacob. But next up on this is the transfer case, and I do want to note real quick, as usual, I have all my nuts and bolts labeled from last time, which has been a total lifesaver, and I am going to clean all these up and make sure they're nice and pretty before I put them in, as usual, but I will spare you some of the boring details. So let's get right back to work on finally getting this thing ready to start. Jacob from Rust Belt Garage is filming for me and I'm about to put in the transfer case. I've already filled this with lube through the actual drive shaft hole because it's easier that way. There's some debate about which fluid and how much fluid you should put in here, but I went by STM Tune which says it's 0.55 quarts. Some people say it's more, but basically you should put it in the car, make sure it's filled up to the fill hole, drive it around and then check again and make sure that it's still coming out of the fill hole and that's how you know. I'm going to try to slide this in, put the drive shaft on and then I'll use a jack to get it up in a position to bolt it in. Got to keep the tail up so that I don't spill my fluid everywhere. And I could have used a little more room, <laughs> but such is life. I don't want to drop this in the dirt. <laughs> That'd be bad. You know, just have to clean it up again. Let's get the moment of insertion. Yes, yes. Oh, daddy. <laughs> we'll see. My insertion skills could use some work, apparently. Might be that the splines are fighting. There we go. Right, what? All right. good. So now the fluid shouldn't come out, ideally, if the seal is good. And then I'll use a crafty knee trick. There we go. I don't like the transmission. The transfer case doesn't mind sitting flat so much. I need to go jack it up into position. That's gonna have to come towards me just a little. Got it just about lined up. And there we go. So now I just gotta jack it up a little bit more. Except the back is getting caught. And go up a little bit. There we go. The splines wanna go on. And there, there we go. Set itself right on. That was satisfying. Yes. And that dowel's almost on. This little guy right here. I may just have to rock it a little. There we go. Ooh. Nice transfer case on. Doesn't look like I leaked any fluid, so that's nice. Inserted with no fluid leakage. <laughs> These are the five bolts for the transfer case, and the two shorter ones go on the back towards the rear of the vehicle, and they all get torqued to 42 foot-pounds. I don't have any of the bolts in yet, and it's kind of sketchy to leave this without a jack, but it made filming easier. Last thing for mounting the transmission is the main cross member, the little rear cross member, and the front mount. I also cleaned and painted most of this as well as cleaned up the bushings. And I didn't paint that, but I did clean up and oil it so it won't rust. So, ready to go on the car. 
I'm gonna put on the main subframe now. This other bracket goes oriented this way, with these facing towards the back. And it attaches basically right next to the forward facing control arm. These conical bolts go in the front two holes closest to the transmission and the square bolts that are a little bit shorter go in the rear closer to the suspension mount. All the rear subframe bracket bolts get 55 foot pounds and the front two get 64. I'm going to skip showing all the back but I will do the front real quick right now. And see if they can strip right out of my uh, rusty core support. <laughs> Hopefully not. There you go. Quick note, some of the holes for the subframe bracket were pretty rusty, so it was hard to get the bolts in, and it appears that the hole for this bolt is actually stripped, and that one goes in there onto this main cross member, so I'm gonna have to repair that later. So all that's left for today is to actually put on the front mount for the transmission. I'm gonna put on the bracket first, which is 42 foot-pounds to the transmission. Then I'm gonna put on the actual mount that goes to the subframe, and that's gonna be 32 foot-pounds. Then I'll put through the through bolt, which is 51 foot-pounds. I don't think so. <laughs> I think that's a good stopping point. <laughs> mm -hmm. And by the way, no, that bolt isn't correct at all and I'll be replacing it soon. It's way too skinny and it was not gonna hold up to 51 foot pounds. Everything's finally done. And that ends the entire epic of putting the transmission back into the GSX. And all that we really have left is to put on the starter, put a battery in there, some fluids, and then we can have that first start live stream, which again is gonna be Tuesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Jacob from Rust Belt Garage, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Thank you very much, everyone. As always, please leave a comment. If you can't think of anything to say, just say that you made it all the way to the end of the video. You know I love to hear it. Like the video, subscribe if you made it all the way in and you haven't. Also, go subscribe to Rust Belt Garage. I'll catch you all very soon. So I was just cleaning up, and look what I found. NOS! Danger to manifold. Danger to manifold, oh man. So fast, so furious. Now me and the mad scientist gotta go replace all the piston rings you just fried. Oh, uh, all right. That stinks. Bye everyone. I'm <clears throat> gonna <laughs> put that at the end. <laughs> Bugs. Bugs. <laughs>